Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we would be doing yesterday's problem of the day that is minimum swaps to sort. So this problem appeared in Microsoft and this is the array problem and can also be solved by visualizing this problem in the form of graph but going in that direction might be tough for beginners so I considered solving it with the same same time complexity and same space complexity by using a constructive way. Now the success percentage is 50% and this is a medium level problem. Now let us read and understand the problem statement. So we are given an array of distinct elements. Distinct elements resolve down to the fact that there would be no duplicates and the frequency of any elements won't be more than 1. So find the minimum number of swaps required to sort the array in strictly increasing order. Strictly increasing means that the first number should never be equal to the next number. Rather, the first number should always be less than the next number. So strictly increasing means the first number would be 2 and then it would be 4, then it would be then it would be 2, 4 and then 5 and then 8. So how many swaps are we doing? We can see that if we just swap 8 with 4 and 4 with 8, we are doing one swap and we are getting the answer. This is how we can get the answer. Now, let us see and understand how we can solve this problem. To solve this problem, what we need to do is, we can first take hold of the unsorted and then convert to sorted thing. And then we can count the minimum number of swaps. But to do that, we need to remember the previous because we would get the array, we would sort it. But we can't retrieve the previous. So, what we can do is, we can convert it to sorted and then we can keep a track of the previous indices by making a vector of pairs and we can just consider it okay fair enough so we would first go from sorted to unsorted the reverse method okay fair enough so it is just c first we have 10 with the index 0 then we have 19 with the index 1 then we have 6 with the index 2 then we have 3 with the index 3 then we have index 5 with the index 4 then we need to sort this in the increasing order. So 3 would come at first with the index 3, then 5 would come after it with the index 4, then comes 6 with the index 2, then comes 10 with the index 0, then comes 19 with the index 1. And we need to sort this in the increasing order. So this is we can see the 3, 5, 6, 10 and 19. So we can see that we can retrieve the previous combination by saying that 3 was situated at the third position, 5 was situated at the fourth position, 6 is situated at the second position. This is what we can do. See, 0 indexing, that is why. Fair enough. Let us move forward and we just keep it here. Okay. Now, what we can do is we can go from this to the previous combination. How can we do that? We can come here. So, this, this should be at the position 0. This thing should be at position 0. So, we would swap it with the third position. That is, this thing would go at this position. So, this would become 10, 0, then 5, 4, then 6, 2, and then 3, 3, and 19, 1. So, one swap is done. So, we would count just 1. Okay. Now, we would see that if now the index is the index we desired for. Yes, it is 0. So, we would move forward. Next, it is 4. So, what we would do is this element needs to be on the fourth index so we would just keep it on the fourth index and we would see that after keeping it on the fourth index if now we have the current one or not so we have 10 0 19 1 6 2 3 3 and then 5 and 4 this is the second time so we would just write it there now 0 1 2 3 and 4 so every place every index is at our desired position so we can say that yes it is done so now let us take the sample test case and see the implementation so i have declared the vector given as a itself then we take up the size of that vector uh, uh, array itself next what we do is we have a vector of pairs now to show you how we are doing is 0 1 2 and 3 and uh, two, 0 1 2 and 3 so we have in the increasing order so 2 and 0 should be there then we have 4 and then 3 should be there then we have 5 and 2 should be there and then we have the last element that is 8 and 1 itself then we are pushing it in the by using a for loop so we are iterating with the for loop and this is acting at the index 
and then we are keeping the count as zero and then we are sorting it so after sorting it this would become like this after sorting the indexes so zero is at the current position we are doing we are happy with it we need to have this swapped so to swap it it needs to be on the third index so z2 zero and then the third one should come here that is eight and then one and then five and then two and then four and then three so we can see that now we go from unsorted to unsorted so basically we are doing the reverse if we are doing any swapping then we are increasing the count okay so we are increasing the counter we are swapping it after that whatever we are getting the count we are returning it. so that is it for today thank you and have a nice day if you face any difficulty regarding to understand this you can reply in the live reply or what you can do is you can connect with me on LinkedIn. My username is Saddat Hazra. Just search me there and send me a text. I would be more than happy to help you. Thank you.